The internet has been around for more than three decades. And if you're watching this video, then it means that you already have access to the internet. And I'm quite certain that you spend a lot of your time online. You might also be a little familiar with what the internet is and how it's become such a big part of our lives. But it is totally fine if you don't. Let me tell you a few interesting and important things about the history of the internet. The main purpose of developing the internet was to share information across the United States. The first form of the internet was ARPANET, by which you could only send emails across different locations. By sending emails, people started to send each other information. When many computers connected with each other, they formed networks. To connect all these networks, machines called routers were introduced that I'm sure you will find in your house today. The internet has changed a lot since its invention. As we grow up, things in our surroundings also change. You might have heard from older people that the internet did not exist a few years ago, but today people cannot even imagine their lives without it. Have you ever wondered how much the internet has changed and where it will go from here? How will it transform in the future? And what exactly will it transform into? Well, you took a good step by clicking on this video. I'm going to explain everything to you. You might have seen the term Web 3.0 many times on the internet or on TV. You might also want to get to know more about it, but everyone who tried to explain it to you used complicated language. Let me help you understand what exactly Web 3.0 means. To understand what exactly it means and how it's related to the future of the internet, we must get a little familiar with the term web. Whenever a question pops up in our minds, we immediately look it up on search engines like Google, YouTube, or Bing, etc. We use websites like Amazon, Facebook, Reddit, eBay, Wikipedia, etc. to help us in our tasks. WWW or the web, which was invented in 1989, is that part of the internet that contains all the websites and web pages. To access this web, we use web browsers like Safari and Chrome. We also need an internet connection to access it. This web has existed in three phases since 1991 until now. Web 1.0, Web 2.0, and the one we're going to talk about today, which is Web 3.0. The Evolution of the Web Web 1.0 was the classical age of the internet, which existed from the mid-1990s to the early 2000s. It was referred to as the read-only web, because websites were only a bunch of static pages that you could only read from. There was nothing else to it. The concept of video streaming didn't exist, and in the era of 1.0, you had to memorize the web URL in order to get the information you desired. Thanks to search engines, we don't have to do that now. It took a whole day to download one song. There was no such thing as a cell phone. I tell you, it was horrible. When people got really bored with Web 1.0, they developed the Read-Write Web, also called the Social Web or Web 2.0. It allowed you to not only receive information, but also give information to the web. It's the version of web that you and I currently use. You can create content and share it with the world. People can make money through various ways on the internet. You can play your favorite games like Roblox on it and stream your favorite shows. You might be confused about one thing here. If Web 2.0 is so resourceful and great, why is there a need for Web 3.0? Another important question, will you still be able to play games on Web 3.0? Well, let me answer that for you. The one drawback of Web 2.0 is that it has allowed big and scary corporations to use the web for their personal gains. As people like me and you begin to share their information on the internet, the companies like Google, Facebook, and YouTube started collecting it. Not only did they sell this information to other advertisers, but they also used it to provide you exactly the type of content you like. So you would spend hours and hours on their websites and forget what homework even means. Have you ever noticed that you got an ad for a toy right after searching for it on the web? That's because big companies have access to all your information. They use that information to provide your ads for precisely what you want. Web 3.0 is designed to deal with this issue and is called the future of the internet. This web is decentralized, which means no one has control over it. Some also say that you will be the owner of all your content. You might have seen many platforms like YouTube and Instagram, etc. take down accounts, pictures, or videos related to information that they do not like or do not want you to see. However, in Web 3.0, only the information you like will stay on the web. 
If you want to take any content down, no one can stop you from that. It will be an open platform where people can debate freely without being targeted by governments and big scary corporations. You'll have the freedom to talk about whatever you want. Doesn't that sound so liberating? And do you know what the most fascinating part is? That there are many other users of the 3.0 systems that will blow your mind. One of them is being machine learning. Whoa, that's such a big word. Don't worry, I'll make it easy for you. Web 3.0 will serve as a Santa Claus, providing you with whatever information you want in any given situation. Let me try to explain that with an example. Sometimes you want to know the answer to your question, but it's too bothersome to go and Google it. So what do you do? You ask Siri. I'm almost sure most of you are familiar with Siri. But did you know that Siri is also a Web 3.0 based application that can answer all your questions? In Web 3.0, you would not have to see any information that doesn't concern you. Up to this point, I've primarily talked about what Web 3.0 does. But what makes all of this possible? What makes Web 3.0 different from all the other webs? Web 3.0 has many features, but I'll tell you the most important one. As I've already said, Web 3.0 will be decentralized. No data will be stored at a single location. No one will benefit from your data. Rather than helping owners and CEOs of big platforms, this technology will benefit you who will generate that content. Moreover, all the decisions related to these platforms will be made through voting. In this voting, all the users will be allowed to participate. And yes, you can vote too. No CEOs will exist anymore. This is because it will be based on blockchain technology. Now you might be thinking, what is blockchain technology? Let me tell you in an easy way. Just like all our biological data is stored in DNA, all the data in Web 3.0 is stored in many computers, which collectively make up a blockchain. Thousands of copies of one single piece of information are created, which are then stored in all these computers. And the good part is that everyone has access to all this information. I'm sure that by now you've developed a lot of interest in this Web 3.0, but this technology is still in the process of making. You might also find it challenging to understand this advanced world, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. You'll also need very advanced devices to access this web, which will be difficult to buy with your pocket money. More importantly, if there is no one to regulate the web, this might lead to cybercrime and abuse. Even though it sounds like the coolest thing, it will have disadvantages. However, I'm sure you'll find a way to use it responsibly and carefully. That's all for today's video, and thank you for watching. I hope all the shared information will be helpful for you all, and if you have any questions or doubts, please leave them in the comment section. And don't forget to like and turn the notification bell on for more informative content.